Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wednesday Night Storm, Episode 2. And we start off tonight with the Queen, Charlotte Flair. She will be taking on Asuka, the women's champion, who, of course, Charlotte attacked last week before their match was supposed to happen. And then, of course, she attacked backstage, and here's a look at that. So, there is some question about what Charlotte Flair's motives might have been. She is uncharacteristically tight-lipped on that particular point. But she will get a chance to prove herself in the ring tonight against the women's champion. And now making her entrance is the women's champion. A one-year reign for Asuka. She is beloved by the fans. And she was attacked last week by Charlotte Flair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the only top-tier match that we have tonight on Wednesday Night Storm. Our main event of the night will be Adam Cole putting the Intercontinental Championship on the line against Kofi Kingston, the man who beat him last week. It could be a historically short run for Adam Cole. And really, I mean, an embarrassing showing if he were to lose his first two uh, matches after Nitro uh, after he beat Bobby Lashley for that belt so that is the main event of the evening and we are hoping to get a word from Alistair Black who of course picked up a victory in the match in the eight-man tag team match last week on Storm that fatal four-way to determine a world championship contender will not uh, it will not happen uh, this week. I think it'll be a couple more weeks. So we're waiting on word, but hopefully we'll hear from Alistair Black tonight. Plus, of course, we've got the final two matches in the first round of our tag team title tournament. But for now, we've got Asuka taking on the woman who attacked her last week, Charlotte Flair. Ten-minute time limit, and Asuka start, starts off strong here. Asuka is the champion for a reason. She has so many different ways to beat you. She can beat you with strikes. She can beat you on the mat. And, of course, she is a master of the submission. That's how she put away Bianca Belair in 15 seconds on Nitro 9 with the patented Asuka lock. And right on cue, here comes the Dragon Sleeper on Charlotte. I think that was rope breaking. Now Charlotte with the deep arm drag. Charlotte, of course, uh, no slouch <laughs> when it comes to in mat skill. Of course, she she picked up so many championship reigns during her run in WWE, and she has yet to hold the title. And GAW and Oscar going for the hip attack. Charlotte moves out of the way. Huge forearm into the corner. So this would certainly be a statement. I'm not sure if Charlotte will be uh, rewarded for attacking Asuka. Asuka not so far showing any effects from that attack last week. And Flair with the swinging net breaker. Styling and profiling. Flair is feeling it. This is a woman with a lot of confidence. Huge clothesline. Both these women, submission masters. Of course, Charlotte always looking to set up. Patented figure eight and the spear. Maybe she won't need. And there she goes, starting to work on the legs here. Go for the pin on the women's champion. Asuka kicks out at one. It's going to take another worldly performance to take this title off of Asuka. Arm trap swinging neck breaker from Charlotte. Oh, beautiful kip up into the Hurricane Rana. And now Asuka working on the neck. 
I'm sure trying to set Flair up for the Oscar lock. These are two women at the top of their game. Oh, Flair, I thought looking for the spear again. Asuka gets the knee. Flair comes right back. Stun gun. Flair obviously powerful and technical in equal measure. Oh, Asuka looking for that back heel kick and now Charlotte laying in the chop. This is a fast paced match. 10 minute time limit as per usual. Another spear from Charlotte. And going for the pin off the spear. Asuka kicks out at two. Need a little bit more than that to put Asuka down. And now Charlotte setting up. She's hit this on Asuka. She hit it last week backstage. Natural selection. Is that enough to get the pin on the women's champion? One, two, no. Asuka kicks out of natural selection. Flair will have to go a little deeper into the bag. And that's the way to do it. Beautiful rolling neck breaker. Into the corner and Asuka gets out. Now she sends Charlotte into the corner and the hip attack. The fans love Asuka. She's been such a popular champion. And now Asuka from behind. Hitting that waist lock. Charlotte now with the chop block. This match has been pretty much everything we thought it would be. Five minutes in. Five minutes left. Asuka going for the flying kick. Doesn't hit. Charlotte float over. DDT. Now up against the ropes, Charlotte. Rebound, suplex. This is a truly amazing performance here from Charlotte. Into the corner and now Charlotte looking for the crossbody into the corner. Asuka moves out of the way. And now Asuka Fujiwara armbar. Oh, that is tight. Look at the torque on Charlotte's shoulder. But Flair powers out. Oh, look at that. Beautiful reversal out of that Fujiwara armbar. Wow, this match has really been something. Uh-oh. Charlotte looking again. Natural selection. And now Charlotte, where's she going? Underneath the ring, oh my God. Oh my God, Charlotte has a baseball bat. Oh my God. And Charlotte! It looked like she had the match won or at least she could have gone for a pin on Asuka. She's just beating the hell out of her. Oh my goodness. Charlotte for the second week in a row. Unbelievable. Well, we're on to the next match. We continue our tag team title tournament. I'm still trying to get over exactly what we saw. I mean, it seemed like Charlotte was in great position after hitting the, the natural selection. And yet, she grabs the baseball bat and just beats Asuka with it. So... Uh, we'll wait to hear more words on that. For now, we've got the Lucha Brothers multiple-time tag team champions in GAW. And one of the most exciting teams in the world. They'll be beginning their quest for the tag team titles. And that quest will begin with British Strong Style. A terrific team out of the United Kingdom. 
These men go way back. They trained at the same gym. They trained under the same trainers. They've toured the world. They've wrestled in places like ICW, Progress, Rev Pro. And now they've teamed up in GAW. And they're going to try to take the tag team scene by storm. And a win over the Lucha Brothers, man, that, that would be the way to do it. Let's see what British Strong Style can do. It'll be Pete Dunne and Pentagon starting in the ring. 15-minute time limit, as always. Whoa, Pentagon immediately... Immediately going for that fireman's carry driver. Pete Dunne kicks out at one. Of course, if, if you're familiar at all with tag team wrestling around the world, you know the Lucha Brothers. Maybe the most exciting team that the world has to offer. Pentagon, the muscle. Hopefully we'll see Ray Phoenix, the high flyer. These men came to GAW four years ago. They're already three-time tag team champions. Dunn and Tyler Bate had their first match as a team actually just less than a year ago. Oh, now they're just landing the strikes to pen. This is British strong style right there. Whoa! Pentagon avoided the knee and Pete Dunn was right there. That is teamwork you don't always expect to see from a team this new. So far, Dunn and Bate have not racked up wins over some of the top teams. That's new brain buster from Bate immediately into the pin. Hang on. Pentagon kicks out at one. So they haven't racked up wins over the Young Bucks, the Lucha Brothers, the Usos, those types of teams quite yet. Of course, they're still new. What a win this would be. The winner of this will take on the winner of the final first round match of the tournament, which happens later on in the night. And of course, we'll show you the updated bracket when that's over. We already know one of the first matchups uh, of the semifinals. Bait taking Pentagon outside. Now, Pentagon is pretty comfortable here. And it, yep, the snap suplex. May have been a mistake from Tyler Bates' perspective. So we know one of the semifinals would be the Young Bucks versus the Usos. Of course, they've had a lot of battles against one another. The Bucks took down Limitless Legion while the Usos went to a controversial countout victory over the Gorillas of Destiny. Hopefully that's not what we'll be seeing here. But of course, you can never put it past the Lucha Brothers. They will employ every tactic in the book to get a win. And we've seen them do it before. Again, 15 second count out in GAW. Pentagon using most of that. Still have yet to see Ray Phoenix yet in this match, but I don't think you can blame him. Pentagon performing pretty well right now. These strikes just laying it in. Now Tyler Bate, beautiful arm drag reversal, but a Pentagon just comes right back. The chops, and now Bate la landing his own chop. Bate uppercut into the corner. Phoenix reaching out, trying to get the tag. Whoa! Not sure what bait was going for there, and now Pentagon hits him with the pump handle driver. I mean, Pentagon right now, this is a tremendous performance. We'll see if he tags in his partner. He's gone over four minutes in this match with no tag, and Tyler Bate powers out of that. And he'll go make the tag to his partner, Pete Dunne. The epitome of British strong style is Pete Dunne. 
He's been a champion almost everywhere he's been. Has yet to pick up a title in GAW, but I'm sure that's coming. Whether it's the tag titles or one of the singles titles, we won't be able to deny Pete Dunne for very long. Pentagon on top of him. And now we'll see Ray Phoenix for the first time. But will it be maybe to finish the match? Pentagon hoists him up. Super kick, pile driver. That may be the last time we see Phoenix in this match. Here comes Tyler Bate, and he breaks it up. Beautiful tag team combination from the Lucha Brothers. But it wasn't good enough to get the pin. Tyler Bate was still there. And now Dunn will try to take advantage of the smaller man. Snap, German. Pete Dunn so adept. Oh, beautiful deadlift. Sit out, power bomb. Dunn is adept not only in the submission game, but he employs a very physical style. Strike based. The truest expression of British strong style that you can find. And he is letting Ray Phoenix have it right now. Trying to hoist him up for the suplex. Phoenix gets him back into the small package too. Dunn kicks out at two. And now Phoenix again looking for the jackknife roll. Covers him. Bait still there. Dunn kicks out. Bait looks absolutely gassed. Trying to hang on to the ropes. Beautiful DDT from Ray Phoenix. This is the athleticism, the speed that we're talking about. Pete Dunn is busted open. And now Phoenix into the corner, flying forearm. This is the kind of speed that we're talking about from Ray Phoenix. It complements his partner and his brother, Pentagon, so well. And now just taunting Dunn. Neither of them even moving, just standing over Pete Dunn. You can see the blood leaking down the bruiser weight's face. I'm not sure what the strategy is here from the Lucha Brothers. I don't think they're going to run out the clock. There's still about eight minutes left. I don't know if they'd want to, even if they could. It's hard to say. Now Dunn finally makes his way to his feet. And he manages to get Phoenix into the corner. Phoenix finds the reversal there. Sends Dunn back the other way. Now, now just staring a hole through him. Not making a move. He's not tagging in Pentagon. This is a strategy that I haven't seen. Uh, certainly not from the Lucha Brothers, who usually, of course, they love to employ a, an incredibly fast-paced style in their tag team matches. But Phoenix seems more than content to just be patient here. And now Pete Dunn makes his way out of the corner. And it looks like he's going to try to take Phoenix. Snapmare kick. Wow, Phoenix just shrugs that off. And now sends Pete Dunn into the corner. Dunn with the elbow. Dunn trying to fight his way back. Not sure if the fans are booing the slow-paced nature of this match or just the Lucha Brothers who certainly have... Uh, have shown some disregard for the rules in the past. Dunn now starting to fight a little bit. Another snapmare follows it up with a kick. Dunn brings in Tyler Bate. Pentagon reaching out for the tag, but Phoenix going to the other rope. Bate just going to drag him back into the middle. Six minutes left here. Bate trapping the arm. It looks like he's going to work on the arm of Ray Phoenix. We've seen Pentagon use a move very similar to that. The famous backbreaker. And now Tyler Bate setting up. Tries to get 
get in the kick. I think he was looking for the Tyler Driver 97. Phoenix turns that into a single leg crab. We know that Bate has sustained a lot of punishment. He is fatigued, he is tired, but he manages to fight his way out of that. Phoenix trying to crawl to his partner, trying to make the tag. Bate now. Deadlift German. I'm amazed that Bate could, could call up the strength, the endurance in order to do that. The Lucha Brothers have been on the front foot most of this match, and now British Strong Style trying to get back, slams Phoenix's head into the corner. Looks like that busted him up. Under five minutes left. Toe hold, elbow drop. Phoenix again trying to get to Pentagon. Pete Dunn really trying to play spoiler. Phoenix with the corkscrew dragon leg whip. And now Phoenix sends him into the opposite corner. Up onto the top rope. I think we know what this means from Ray Phoenix. Maybe. I was wrong. He's going up looking for the Spanish fly. And Pete Dunn manages to get his way out of that. Pushes Phoenix down and Phoenix gets the tag to Pentagon. Phoenix has to roll out of the ring. Pentagon, big clothesline, drop kick. Pentagon is alone here. Oh, Pete Dunn turns his leg around. German. British Strong Style can press their advantage. Ray Phoenix is down. He's out of the ring. He's not moving. Pete Dunn setting up Pentagon. Counters that with the knee. And now Pentagon again looking for that pump handle. Half Nelson driver. He's got it. Tyler Bate trying to get into the ring. Phoenix is there. Tyler Bate can't break it up in time. The Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers win. The pump handle half Nelson driver was enough to do it. Pete Dunn already ate that super kick pile driver. Bate was there to break him up, but he just could not muster the energy to get into the ring in time to break up the half Nelson driver. The Lucha Brothers win. They are moving on to the next round. Up next, the Cruiserweight champ is in action. Well, the Cruiserweight champ in action here against Sin Cara. Sin Cara. The definition of a man who got off to the wrong start on the international stage, Sin Cara never connected with WWE fans. But GAW scouts saw something they liked that WWE never took advantage of. After leaving WWE, no one heard from Sin Cara for several years. But in 2017, the man without a face turned back up in GAW with a curiously new flair. Ricochet vowed to be a fighting champion if he were to defeat Pac at Nitro 9, and he did. So he's putting his belt on the line here against Sin Cara. But, folks, we do have some breaking news here that we have to show you. It's a picture. All we have is a still picture from a security camera. While Ricochet, while Ricochet is making his entrance here, it seems to be Alistair Black on the ground and the man looming over him. I, I, I can't quite tell who it is. It looks too small to be Samoa Joe. But I think, uh, suffice to say, we will not be seeing Alistair Black tonight. So we will keep you updated with details about what may have happened there. Try to get some security camera footage other than just uh, a still image, which is what we can provide for you right now. But in the meantime, we do have the Cruiserweight Champion making his entrance. Again, Ricochet vowed to be a fighting champion and he will begin his now second reign as Cruiserweight Champion against Sin Cara. Non-title action. Championship is not on the line and we start out with double drop kicks. 
the cruiserweight division in GAW is about as fun a division as you could ever imagine. These are wrestlers that are beyond talented, athletic. They've enjoyed success all over the world. Many of them have enjoyed success here in GAW. I mentioned this is Ricochet's second title reign as cruiserweight champion. Of course, when he was touring the world as Prince Puma, his alter ego, he held the cruiserweight championship for over a year here in GAW. So he is no stranger to the responsibility of being a champion. Sin Cara looking to make a name for himself against Ricochet. Against the cruiserweight champion. Going for the pin. Champion kicks out. Now, of course, Sin Cara knows full well what, uh, what the consequences could be should he win this match. I mean, beautiful middle rope moonsault. I mean, like I mentioned, uh, in our main event tonight, Kofi Kingston gets a title shot at the Intercontinental Championship because he beat Adam Cole. And Adam Cole was just defending his title. Uh, you know, as or the, the title wasn't on the line in that match, but he was, uh, he was in action just like Intercontinental Champions uh, have vowed to do. It's a, it's a fighting, they're all fighting champions. That's what we know Intercontinental Champions as, and Ricochet is no different. But the risk is, the risk is pretty high. Cutter from Ricochet. The risk is pretty high here. Should Ricochet lose? I think he knows that. And now Ricochet looking for that Inzaghiri off the, off the middle rope. Sin Cara brushes him away. Talk about a guy who's toured all over the world. Sin Cara. Ricochet looking for the sharpshooter. I haven't seen him use this before. And the referee, I think, immediately calls for rope break. He was a little too close to the rope to be locking in that submission. But you like to see just a little bit more depth from Ricochet. So great in the air as an athlete. Maybe the best athlete in the world, in the world of wrestling. But just seeing a little bit more depth from him makes him an even more dangerous champion. The Sin Cara raking the eyes. And Dragon, Dragon Rana from Sin Cara rolling up the champion. Ricochet powers out. Sin Cara going up to the top rope. Looking for his patented moonsault. Nobody home. And now Ricochet has the upper hand. Beautiful single leg drop kick from the champion. Snapmare. And now Ricochet looking for another submission. Straight in the middle of the ring. Now that is painful. Look at the arm. Look at... Look at how Sin Cara's arm is bent. Is Sin Cara going to have enough to hang on here? Four minutes into this match, Ricochet has that in tight. I think Ricochet figured the damage had been done. He releases up to the top rope. We know how great he is up here. 6.30, no! That's how he put away Pack. Nobody was home. Sin Cara gets up now. Arm behind. And hammerlock. DDT, Sin Cara going to pin the champion. Two, three, Sin Cara has pinned the champion. Second week in a row, we have a new champion trying to, trying to consolidate his belt and he loses in the attempt. Will Sin Cara get a title shot next week? The way that Kofi Kingston has won tonight. We'll have to see. But what a performance from the man without a face. Sin Cara has pinned the champion.
It's the final first round match of the tag team title tournament. And we have saved maybe the most fearsome team in GAW for last. Hansen and Rowe, champions all over the world. It's War Machine. These two men, weighing in at over 500 pounds. These men are as terrifying as it comes in a wrestling ring. They have been champions at Ring of Honor. They have been champions in New Japan. They have been champions in general admission wrestling. And they're looking to repeat earn their second championship reigns in action oh my god I didn't expect this I did not expect this the Hardy Boys we haven't seen them in in GAW in well, it's been it's been eight months, at least since we've seen the Hardy Boys in GAW. Matt and Jeff Hardy beloved around the world, champions, both single and tag champions, almost everywhere they've been. The Hardy Boys have made their return to GAW. What a match we have in store for us, and it's next. Rowe and Matt Hardy start things off. The fans love the return of the Hardy Boys. I was not expecting this. The Hardy Boys are former GAW Tag Team Champions. 2011, they won the Tag Team Belts. But uh, you know who I know doesn't care about that? War Machine. I don't think they give a damn about the pedigree of the Hardy Boys. This is beautiful chain wrestling here from Roe and Matt Hardy. And now here comes Hanson. These two men. Fighting experience. Hansen, you've heard it a thousand times. The high flyer of the group, despite his size. We get tired of hearing about it, but you don't often see a man that size do the things that he can do. These men born and raised as Vikings trained in the ways of war. And this is exactly how they treat their tag team matches. This is war. These two teams could not be more different in style. We're seeing evidence of that right here as the beloved Jeff Hardy goes to work. The atomic drop. That is a lot of strength to lift a man that heavy up off the ground. Hansen consistently measures in at around 330 pounds. Really going to work on that arm. The winner of this, of course, will take on the Lucha Brothers. And as a reminder, the other semifinal match in the tag team title tournament features the Young Bucks taking on the Usos. Talk about a dream match. But Jeff Hardy eats the knee from Rowe. This is brutal. This is what War Machine does. This is what they do to you. Rowe, terrific strength, gut wrench, bomb. Got both of his arms, looking for a camel maybe? Going for the camel clutch. That's close to the ropes. Hardy manages to work his way out of it. 
And it looked like he was going back to tag in Matt, but he's staying. DDT! And that connected flush. Rowe is bleeding right above his eye. Still finds the reversal. But now Jeff with the clothesline. I don't know which match. I'm not quite sure which match I would like better. Leg drop. Right between the legs and the drop kick. Basement drop kick from Jeff. I'm not sure which match I would like better. War Machine versus the Lucha Brothers or the Hardys. Uh, in GAW, uh, War Machine, well, they, they have gone, they have been to war with the Lucha Brothers before. In fact, they defeated the Lucha Brothers back in 2017 to win tag title gold. The Hardys have not yet had a match with the Lucha Brothers. And now Jeff Hardy twists to fate. And then the spinning leg drop. This is vintage Jeff Hardy. This is exactly what we love to see out of these two men. But Rowe just finds a way to shut down the momentum. That Lucha Brothers British Strong Style match earlier was excellent. Technically great. Fast paced. If anything, this match is probably better. They are wrestling at a breakneck pace right now. Oh, wow, Hardy with the straight back drop. Looking for that kick. Oh, Ro just lays it in. And the Superman punch. One, two, Jeff Hardy kicks out. And it looked like Hanson was going straight after Matt Hardy. Ro, I think, was trying to pull down Hardy, and then Jeff makes the tag. But certainly War Machine now at a bit of an advantage. Rowe trying to bring Matt Hardy over into the corner. We know that the type of devastating tag team offense that War Machine possesses. Look at the strike. Rowe straight back up. Answered with the drop kick from Hardy. Rowe back up again. And the drop kick. Both men down. What a sequence. Jeff Hardy now starting to stir on the side of the ring. Both Roe and Matt Hardy down in the ring with nine minutes left to go in this match. I'm not sure why the referee hasn't started counting yet. That's another issue. Matt Hardy, the first to make it to his feet. Jeff Hardy is there. Jeff Hardy's made it back onto the apron. Roe may, may be playing possum there. He looked good. Hitting that clothesline. Into the corner goes Matt Hardy. Oh, I think we know what's coming here. Looking for fallout. That is a 300 plus pound man that just fell on Matt Hardy and you're never kicking out of that. Too quick for Jeff Hardy to find his way into the ring. And War Machine spoils the return of the Hardy Boys. War Machine will move on to face the Lucha Brothers. Two teams with a lot of history. Fallout did it. What a performance from War Machine. And at the conclusion of the first round, here is the bracket as it stands. More details on the semifinals coming up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the first title defense on Wednesday Night Storm in over three months. Kofi Kingston, a man beloved by the fans. I said it last week, it continues to be true. And Kofi Kingston earned himself a title shot by beating the new Intercontinental Champion, Adam Cole. This is as unexpected as it gets, and this is exactly what GAW is all about. Kofi Kingston can win 
just his second title in GAW. He's a former tag team champion. He's missed some time due to injury, but he's back. He has a chance to put his name in the record books against this man, Adam Cole. Putting his GAW Intercontinental title on the line. Of course, Cole paying homage to his time in WWE NXT. As part of the Undisputed Era, he was NXT champion. And he is putting his title on the line against Kofi Kingston. It's really it's really amazing to me. This is exactly what General Admission Wrestling is all about. This is exactly what it's always been about from the moment it started and from the OG wrestlers, uh, from guys like Goldberg and Booker T and Scott Steiner and, and these types of guys. They were all about earning your titles, earning your keep in GAW the Intercontinental title had this is the 10 year anniversary of the Intercontinental Championship of course legendary champion AJ Styles was the first man to win it as part of the Intercontinental Championship tournament he def he fought almost every week on Wednesday Night Storm and now Adam Cole trying to carry on that tradition but his reign could be over almost before it starts at the hands of that man Kofi Kingston Kingston is a fan favorite hell he's one of my favorites and he should be one of yours too. What an inspiring story this man has. Adam Cole, baby. Putting his title on the line. What a main event we have here on Wednesday Night Storm. Let's do it. No time limit. This match will go as long as it needs to until we have ourselves a champion, either a new champion in Kofi Kingston or defending champion in Adam Cole. And Cole getting things started off fast. Kingston evades the elbow, but Cole comes right back with the neck breaker. When you talk about Kofi Kingston, you have to talk about his story, which is such an inspiring one. He is one of very few wrestlers from the continent of Africa. It's not an incredibly developed wrestling scene. Comes from Ghana. And his dream has always to been to has always been to inspire kids that grew up like he did. Uh, without without idols. Uh, that were from where he was from and, and without sophisticated wrestling schools and all these things. And he never got that opportunity in WWE. So Kofi Kingston came here to GAW in 2014. And even though he's dealt with some injuries in the six years since, he is a multi-time tag team champion looking for his first singles gold. This match is about as fast as I think we all expected it would be. Beautiful technical wrestling between Cole and Kingston. And Kingston blocks the suplex and turns it into one of his own. You can see in equal parts the strength and athleticism from Kofi. And it looked like he was trying to lock in the head scissors there. And now Cole with the big jawbreaker. Lays in the kick. Cole hoists him up. Oshikaroshi on Kingston. Going for the pin off of that. Two. Kingston kicks out. 
Adam Cole used the last shot to beat Bobby Lashley at Nitro 9. Usually he sets it up with a super kick. Kingston was there with the educated elbow, and he's there again. Trouble in Paradise. This is how he beat Cole last time. This is how he beat Cole last week. Rolls him over. Is that enough to do it? One, two, and Cole kicks out. Trouble in Paradise, not enough to pin the champion. We know that Adam Cole increases his level when the stakes are highest, and we're seeing that right now. The Trouble in Paradise was enough to put him away last week. Not enough this time. Kingston going up top. Elbow drop right under the ribs. That was awkward. Cole somehow finds the energy to muscle Kingston off. Big strike. Oh, another big strike. Sends Kingston down. Adam Cole's really taking control here. And going for the pin. After a big knife edge chop, Kingston kicks out. This match has been fast, but it's been very technical which I think is the most impressive part about both of these men. Kofi Kingston getting the crowd pumped up. Such an athlete is Kofi. And we're seeing a showcase of that right here. Blinding speed from the Ghanaian. In terms of sports, they're known for their soccer, not so much for their wrestlers. Kofi Kingston trying to change all that. Gets Cole up. Falcon Arrow. Kingston is not letting Cole rest. Cole again with that elbow. That last one was enough to bust Kingston open. On the forehead, Kingston is bleeding profusely already. Big drop kick. I can't, I, I really can't get over how fast this match has been. Again, Cole with that elbow in the corner. And now Kofi hits him with an elbow of his own. And the monkey roll from Kingston. It looked like Cole maybe was trying to set up a Panama Sunrise right there. Kingston taking time to just catch his own breath down to a knee. Cole manages to stand and Kingston immediately comes back and now Cole with the blow. Knife edge chop. Kingston gets out of that one and another drop kick. Listen to the fans reaction to Kofi Kingston and now he's beckoning Cole to get up. Trouble in paradise and Cole ducks it. And now Cole sending Kingston into the corner and Kingston again hits him with that elbow. The corner has been an unlucky place for both of these men. Massive double-handed chop to the chest. And Kingston. I haven't seen him bust out that move very much. Now sends Cole into the corner. Monkey flip from Kingston. Oh, beautiful. Springboard off the corner. Is it enough to pin the champion, too? Oh, Adam Cole kicks out two and a half. Unbelievable. Kingston is just keeping up the pressure. He's doing the right thing. Gut buster. Again, drops Kingston down to a knee. This is what GAW is all about. Kingston looking to finish it. Trouble in paradise. Cole goes down. Kingston has to drag him away from the rope. Is it enough? Do we have a new champion? One, two, three. Kofi Kingston has won. Unbelievable. Kofi Kingston is champion. I could not 
have ever imagined this when we saw Adam Cole hold that title up high after beating one of the most fearsome men in the division in Bobby Lashley. Kofi Kingston has won. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. A shocking result to end Wednesday Night Storm. Join us next episode for more GAW action. Subscribe so you don't miss it. We appreciate it.